What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. We're back with another character guide and today's character is going to be Mr. Game & Watch. This character was actually requested by a viewer known as Yeetman Stan and as always, I don't know about as always, but I'm going to start leaving people's names within the video basically to give them credit for the suggestion and I always try to, um, if they leave a comment, I usually highlight it or like it or something just so you guys can comment to them saying thank you if you want to or whatever you have to do, like their comment, that's always nice. But in this video, we're going to cover everything involving Gaming Watch from his moves to combos, all that kind of stuff. I'm also going to leave the um, combo timestamp in the video like I normally do because I feel like a lot of you guys maybe understand Gaming Watch already and you're here for the combos, in which case I'm also here for that too. But anyway, let's get started with this video. All right, let's start off with our jab, our tilt, and our dash attack. Let's start with the jab first. Gaming Watch has a pretty good jab. It comes out at frame four, making it a pretty good, like, I wouldn't say out of shield option per se, but just a quick little reactive move you can do. Doesn't do that much damage. However, it does happen to lock, and if you do the rapid jab, it can do about 20 to 30 quite easily. I'll try to put that right here. It even registers on the combo meter, which I find a little bit funny because it's just so kind of like juvenile looking, but it kind of gives Gaming Watch his, um, his character, I suppose. Not really a kill option, but as you saw there, 27 easy. Um, you're probably not gonna get 27 in the middle of the map over here because they can easily just DI or shield or whatever like that after being hit a few times, but still, nevertheless, a pretty good option. Now, Game of Watch's dash attack is an interesting move because it has multiple hitboxes basically, and it can cover a uh, ledge very well. What I mean by that is if your opponent is fixing to recover, maybe they don't recover very well, they recover a little bit high, you can actually run to the ledge with Game & Watch and kind of hit them with your head right there. And more often than not, you will catch them if they didn't recover you know, perfectly, which is really nice. Now, the thing to know with this move is if you're going to do it, the ending of the move has a little hitbox that only does just about 8% which is still nice, it's pretty. It's still a decent move, but if you manage to get the hit with the move as he, uh, as the uh, startup of the move starts to happen, you get way more damage with way more knockback. So I'll show that right here. 12% a little more knockback. Can become a kill option, but way later, just keep that in mind. All right, let's get to some of the tilts. Game & Watch has, in my opinion, pretty good tilts. Um, let's start with... Let's start with forward tilt first. So forward tilt actually comes out at frame eight and uh, can be used as a reliable kill option at some point. Here's what it looks like. It kind of covers everything in front of him and his body as well. So if he's really, really close to you, of course it'll hit. If he has some distance, it'll hit. So it's a pretty good range move. Now his down tilt is one of my personal favorites only because I like the animation, but here's a little secret. Down tilt actually will kill a whole lot sooner than forward tilt, and it comes out faster. So I think it's a pretty good move, like a, a, even like a good change up move if you don't want to use forward tilt all the time, despite forward tilt being a pretty good tool. But here's the thing, if you happen to miss down tilt, the pretty much opening to get punished is so huge, because the move... While it comes out at frame 6, is basically negative 27 on shield. So if your opponent shields this or just, you know, parries it or something, you are wide open and you probably will get punished. But I still think this move is pretty good and I love the animation behind it too. Alright, and now for our last tilt, which is our up tilt. I think Game & Watch has one of the best up tilts in the game for a couple of reasons. It's kind of fast. Oh, you know what? Let me put this on too, just so you guys can see this. I meant to do this earlier, but I forgot, my bad. So I'm gonna show you guys the invincibility and stuff. By that, I mean, uh, whenever he does his up tilt, his hands will light up blue. That's because even if you try to hit him there, he won't take damage. It's pretty sneaky, right? So if he does the up tilt, it's a pretty good combo tool, meaning he can do things afterwards. It's a pretty good uh, combo starter. And it does decent damage too. You can even do it out of smash attack sometimes. Let me see if I can get somebody here. Yeah, really simple, really basic. So I think it's actually a pretty good move. I don't see it all too often. Maybe it's because people just don't take it seriously, but I still think it's a pretty good tool to use. Time to talk about some of Game & Watch's smash attacks. Now Game & Watch has interesting smash attacks and the fact that they all have almost different properties to them. Now, they aren't the fastest out of all smash attacks in the game. They definitely are not the fastest. But despite having kind of lackluster frame data, they are easily made up for in different ways. So let's cover the first one, which is his forward smash. 
This one can kill rather early. It's important to note that if you are able to space it properly, the flame deals way more damage than the stick will. 31, drop the fully charged, and fully charged stick, 23 with no burn effect. But the cool thing about this is, is despite it not looking like it has much range on it, I mean, it, it looks like it has a, you know, enough range, I guess, to get the job done. The hitbox on the end of the flame is deceptively large. So even though you can't really see it, I can probably hit Samus from here despite it not really looking like I can, which is really nice, and it can easily get the kill rather early. I think it starts killing at, I'm going to say around 70 probably? I know, I know it kills rather early if you at least can space it properly. Let's test it out here. Oop, wrong camera. Mobby it. Let's test it out here. Get him in the middle a little bit. So fully charged, fire, easy, yeah, nice. Just remember to space it properly when you're gonna do it. Let's talk about the up smash. So Game & Watch is one of those few characters where people will tell you they hate this character. They just absolutely hate this character. And it's because of a lot of his moves and his smash attack is another great example. So it's basically just a generic headbutt. It doesn't look like much, but as you see there, Game & Watch actually ends up flashing green for a very quick instance. While he's green, he's impervious to basically taking damage. It's like super armor basically, and it does wonders for the move. Because the move is rather slow. I believe it comes out at frame 22 or 21, which is fairly slow for a smash attack. But the fact that he has armor means he can basically just throw it out without a care in the world and not worry about anything. And even though it says it's 21 or 22 frames, it is rather fast. Not to mention the fact that it also has another strange hitbox. So you see the pattern of his head going forward, basically. You would assume that pattern means wherever the head is, is where the damage will be dealt. However, even if he's not really headbutting you, his head coming back or uh, going forward can still hit, kill way early. And even if your opponent happens to avoid the initial headbutt, there still is a lingering hitbox behind his head after he swings forward. So it's important to keep that in mind. This move is terrifying for a lot of people. All right, and the last match attack, which is, <laughs> I'm gonna say this is probably the most hated one just because of how much it can do for him. So it's his down smash. They changed the animation from his previous games. He doesn't, he didn't used to have that like little boy kind of, I guess, appearance, but, um, it also works a whole lot differently too. So if he's really close to you with it, it's going to send you in a very bad direction, diagonal down, not good for your opponent. That's also, that's pretty good right there. That'd probably be enough for most people. However, if you can space it and happen to get the mallet to hit the opponent instead of the actual, um, his arms basically, you can ground your opponent, which is a whole lot better. Now it won't send them flying. However, there are so many follow-ups you can do after it that it more than makes up for it. For instance, if your opponent is around 70 to 50, they're essentially dead because if you can ground them with this, not only does it ground for a pretty decent amount of time, you can also follow up with the forward smash. And as you see on the total damage combo system or uh, on the right side, basically, it actually said 49.2 damage with a combo of two, meaning that down smash to forward smash is true to some degree because your opponent can always mash out incredibly fast let me try to get it one more time just in case you guys missed it let me do it one more time because i know it said it the first time huh that's so strange it's not doing it but just maybe you know what let's knock up the damage to 80 or maybe an 85 just to guarantee it i don't know why it's not giving me it there we go just crazy damage can kill very early because of it very good move. In fact, you see a lot of Game & Watches usually spam this move because it's just that good. <laughs> now, it doesn't have armor or anything like that, but it's just a scary move for your opponent to approach into because not only does it cover his body, but his sides as well. And it's just not worth getting hit by, basically, for your opponent to even try to approach. Time to focus on Game & Watch's grab as well as, as well as all of his throws. So Game & Watch's grab is kind of deceptive. If you just do a normal grab, it looks very traditional, like every other grab in the game basically. However, if you do a running grab, despite it being a little bit slower, he has much more range when it comes to actually potentially grabbing the opponent. So let's try to do it here. See, I wasn't really anywhere close to him at that point, but it still managed to grab, which is really nice. I'm sure it's really annoying for some people, but uh, <laughs> Game & Watch Man's probably love it. All right, so here are the throws. You have your back throw and your forward throw, which are basically identical in every way. They do the same amount of damage and basically the same knockback. 
Neither one are very good for kill options, but it's still nice to put your opponent in disadvantage state. You have your up throw, which does the most damage. And the cool thing about all of Game Watch's throws are they all look identical in the initial startup. So you basically can, you, I mean, not basically, you can trick your opponent into thinking they're going one direction when they might not be and basically cross up their DI or something like that, you know, that's pretty good to know. So up throw does the most damage out of all of Game & Watch's throws. And you can actually do pull off some kind of like, I guess you can combo into it if you really want to, but the best combo tool is down throw. Because down throw puts them just in the perfect spot above you so you can do whatever you want into them if you really, you can do neutral A or whatever. Just basically do any move you want into that because they're perfectly placed ahead of you. The only downside is, is out of all the throws, down throw does the least amount of damage. But because of all the combos you can do, you can potentially get the most from it. If you thought some of Game & Watch's moves were already scary, just wait till you see his aerials. Game & Watch has some of the best aerials in the game because majority of them are very safe to use, extremely hard to punish, and just extremely good at juggling and all other types of other things. Very solid aerials. It, my advice to you if you're serious about playing Game & Watch, get used to juggling your opponent because he is so good at it. So let's start with the first one. The very first aerial is his neutral air, and it's just simply him pretty much letting the fish out of the bowl. Now the cool thing about this is the bowl itself is actually a hitbox, as you saw. There's a bulk in his hand basically, but the fish that come out are also a hitbox, and the hitbox follow the fish. So it's not just one massive hitbox, it's basically um, kind of like a pattern, like a line pattern. The hitbox follows the fish. <clears throat> On top of that, this move is incredibly good for juggling. Uh, your opponent and also doing other opponents it's very very difficult for your opponent to actually get out of it because it covers so well which is nice you have your up air which is extremely safe um usually it's impossible to get punished for using this most people can just throw it out and just get lucky or not even get lucky you can just throw it out and hit people and more often than not if a player isn't used to fighting game and watch or is kind of new at the game they're usually stuck when, when dealing with up air because it, it requires very little commitment from Game & Watch, and it's very safe for him since he's so far away from his opponent. So very good, especially good for juggling. So there's two options that are good for juggling right there. Next, you have his forward air. Now, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with forward air, mainly because sometimes it's really good for me, sometimes I really hate when it doesn't work. So what I mean by that is Game & Watch releases the bomb, and the bomb will make contact after a few, or not contact, the bomb will explode after a set time limit. However, if you can also drop the bomb on a platform or the stage itself, it'll explode regardless as soon as it hits the stage, which is nice to know because you can actually pretty much make the move go off a whole lot quicker. And it is a very good move for even killing off the stage or just doing damage in general because it actually does quite a significant amount for just a forward air. So what I don't like about it is if your opponent, ma er, if your opponent manages to hit the bomb before the initial explosion, it won't actually do anything, meaning you did a move in an attempt to harm your opponent and nothing happened, and that is just a horrible feeling. So keep that in mind. Be very, very careful um, when using the move. Do not do it super close to your opponent. If you're this close to your opponent and you're doing it like that, um, you're probably doing it wrong. <laughs> I mean, it still could work, you know? But if you're already that close, maybe focus on doing back airs which is the next thing we're going to talk about, or just doing neutral airs because it's just the safest thing for you to do. Now, the good news is this is very safe on shield if your opponent does decide to shield it because you basically already threw it. You have options to do other things while the bomb is already dropping. But just keep that in mind. If your opponent hits the bomb, they can hit you back. Also, feel free to try to edge guard with it. It's a pretty good tool for that as well. Now, the back air that Game & Watch has is extremely good for carrying your opponent off the edge and is also pretty safe as well because it's a good hitbox. It's like far out extends from his body. It's this, uh, wait, let's see if I can do it really quick. It's the turtle. Everybody loves the turtle. And it can be used to juggle or all kinds of things. Let me see if I can get it right here. Uh, let me just do something stupid, see if I can get the turtle off. Yeah, basically that's what it is. Um, it doesn't do heavy, heavy damage, but it is a very good tool for um, basically just carrying your opponent off putting them at a disadvantage, that kind of stuff. All right, and I believe that cover, oh wait, no, I forgot one, probably the most important one. So Game & Watch actually has a um, down air that is very scary to a lot of people. A lot of people don't like it because Game & Watch is associated with this move being 
spammable because you can basically go in the air and come down for free and it's very safe and that's what you just saw um not only does it have the ability to be a falling hitbox which is kind of scary to deal with already but if you do manage to get your opponent with it in the air like you actually do it like connect with them as the startup occurs it will spike your opponent which i love i, lo I love how my characters have spikes it just makes them that much more fun to play for me However, other people probably will not like it so much. Um, one more thing to know about the move is um, the hitbox itself is the key, and it extends a little bit farther out than the key, so you don't have to really hit the key dead on. But what you just saw there was I completely missed him entirely with the key. That is because when Game & Watch lands, you see how he kind of scrunches up right there? It's because the hitbox actually expands on the ground and can cause uh, damage to your opponent, which is really cool. And most people don't know that about Game & Watch, so they're very susceptible to it. Yeah, just good good aerials. You should definitely use them if you're playing Game & Watch. We have one last thing to cover before we get into our combo portion of the video, and that is Game & Watch's specials. And they are extremely fun to use, full of um, kind of character, you know, it really makes them feel alive when you use them and some of them are even RNG based. So first one we're gonna talk about is the neutral B, which is when he pretty much cooks, which is kind of cool. Um, doesn't do too much damage really, but it can actually stack if you get multiple hits and you can angle it to the side or upwards. Um, usually you'll get about maybe three to two in before your opponent kind of starts backing away. And the pan itself, which you see in his hand right there, actually has a hitbox as well. If your opponent is too close, it will burn them and knock him back. Um, I usually don't see people using that move too much. What they tend to do is they will knock your opponent off stage and um, traditionally you can follow your opponent down without fear of dying because Game & Watch is just so like crazy off the edge. But you could also use this move to help edge guard your opponent if you know they're going to jump, maybe raise the food up a little bit so they can't really get to you. It's just a safe move in general. It is rather slow so if you keep mashing B basically you might have a hard time putting it away when you really want to so just keep that in mind. Next move we're going to talk about is his up B, basically his get out of jail free card. This move is ridiculous. A lot of people hate this move. This is another reason people hate Game & Watch. So um, let me make sure I have this on here just so I know. Okay, cool. So if you watch Game & Watch, he flashes blue at the very beginning. That's because he has invincibility on startup, which is just crazy as is. Not to mention the fact that he gets some height afterwards and he can do moves while coming out of it aerials everything you can basically think of on top of that it's a really good tool for gliding back to the stage if you just happen to be too far away uh, maybe you're over here you can easily make it back no worries air dodge down whatever you have to do but another thing people don't like about it is that it's an incredibly good out of shield option so if your opponent is just pummeling away at your shield you can just up b and you basically got out of it and you already know that Game Watch is incredibly good at juggling, so when you're doing that, you can basically just up B your opponent and try to go for something in the air with very little risk to you. Let's see if I can do that again. There you go. Or, if you, your opponent happens to not be clipped by it and you just happen to get away from them, maybe you missed, you can always uh, down air back to them, as we discussed earlier. Just a phenomenal move, honestly. Let's talk about the bucket next. Oh yes, the bucket. Let me see. Uh, do, 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 do. let's put, no, no, that's not it. Where is it? CPU beer. There you go. Let's make Samus start shooting us, because why not? So there's the bucket. You see Game & Watch is flashing white right now. That is because he, um, basically is telling you I have something in my bucket. Now, the cool thing about it is it'll actually do double the damage based on what you picked up. And Samus just shot basically a full-powered charge shot at me, meaning this is going to do some ridiculous damage. So let me just show you how much damage it can do. He's at, or she's at zero right now. Um, yeah, 55, one strike, wide hitbox. Can usually kill around 20%. It, it's, it's a good move. Not to mention the fact that it has really decent range on it as well, if I hadn't mentioned that already. Another thing that people don't seem to realize about this is a lot of Game & Watches can bait their opponent into shooting them with it by simply facing the opposite way. Now, um, with Samus, if she sees me doing this, she's probably not going to shoot at me. However, if I do this, she might think she has a shot to actually try to hit me. So let me show you what I mean by that. So she's going to take her shot anyway because I'm going to tell her to. But I can face this way and still buck it and then just throw it back and kill her anyway. Now another thing about this move is um, certain moves that pretty much absorb a projectile 
like what you just saw there, he absorbs the projectile entirely. If it's a missile, like one of Samus's missiles, um, instead of actually absorbing it, it'll just be reflected back at her. So keep that in mind. It basically sends everything back, which is really nice. Just a really, really good move too. Um, it usually causes people, once they see the bucket the first time, to just initially stop shooting things, which is awesome for you, because it's less projectiles for you to worry about, and uh, you like to fight up close, so, you know, it's good. Um, one more thing about it, if I can remember it, but it's just fading by me. I'm sure it'll come to me later, but it's just not registering to me right now. But anyway, let's get to the last move for his specials, and I save this one for last because it's everybody's favorite. It's basically the reason they enjoy Game & Watch so much. So, it is called Judge, and it is a side B. If you're not using Judge at least once or twice a game, maybe, just for fun, you're not playing Game & Watch right. You know, you gotta try to go for those nines every now and then. So, Judge is basically a random... Yeah, it's completely random, basically. There's no, uh, well, there's my nine first time. Cool, good luck. Um, you're never gonna get nine twice in a row, but that is usually the number you're looking for. And there are different numbers, one through nine, so you have a one out of nine chance of getting it. And each number does something entirely different from the last. So if you get a one, one will actually, oh wow, cool. One will actually do damage to yourself, inflict no knockback to your opponent, and do about 2%. You don't want to get a one, it's not fun. Um, the second one has been known to cause tripping in other games, but I don't remember if it trips in this game or not. So if you get a number two, you can potentially trip your opponent, but it has very little damage anyway. Uh, if you get a three, it kind of acts as a fan, um, like one of the item fans, basically. Uh, it sucks your opponent kind of inwards towards you, but doesn't do that much damage. If you get a four, it kind of acts like a blade. It's a little like, like of a slashing effect. Does about, you know, I think around maybe like seven to 12%. Nothing too crazy. Basically, the first four numbers aren't that crazy. But when you get to five through nine, they get a little better. So the fifth one is actually kind of like electrical. It's not a nine, but it's electrical. And it can cause around 15%, kind of hold them in the air a little bit. It's still nothing too crazy. The sixth one is a fire one. It can burn your opponent. It can even knock them down. Sometimes it's been known to spike people, but I've yet to really got or I get that before, so I really couldn't tell you much about that. Seven is your kind of like seven, 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 like a lucky number. If you can hit a seven on somebody, it'll actually, let's see if we can get one. Nope, fine, just give me the nine then. Uh, <laughs> if we can get a seven here, there's five. If you can get a seven, it basically drops apples for you. And uh, these apples, regardless of if you have items on or not, will basically drop to your feet and you can eat them and heal yourself, which is really cool. If you get an eight, which you just saw earlier, oh, right there, cool. You get an eight it will freeze your opponent and you can proceed to do combos to them or whatever you're trying to do really um the higher percent you hit the eight on the longer they will stay frozen and of course we have the nine which is gonna watch is like most fun move to hit the sound it makes the little bell sound is um agonizing for the opponent so much fun for you to hear partially the reason why most people play game and watch in my opinion i'm sure that's not true i'm sure people play him because he's just a pretty good character as it is but i fell in love with him because of that move so nine is usually the way to go for him and you do have some combos you can do which we will discuss right now all right it is time for the combo portion of the video personally my favorite part of the video because i just enjoy kind of learning what the character can do while i'm making these up usually i try to make them up as i go um but you know i try to write them down for you guys so i don't forget but anyway Here's the first one. This one you can do at 0%. In fact, I advise you do it at 0% because if you attempt it higher, uh, maybe around like 20, it's just probably not gonna work. The initial hit you want is an up smash. So you're gonna go for up smash to up tilt, or you can do up air if you don't wanna do the uh, up tilt. So here's what it looks like. Easy 38. Or, oh, I'm sorry, I actually messed that one up. It's that to that, and then you go up air. And you can catch him. So up smash to up tilt to up air. I read that wrong, my guy. My bad, guys. Let's see if I can get it one more time. I know I'm kind of being slow on it. There we go. Easy 52%, nine combo. And uh, if you don't want to do your up air, like the um, this portion of it, you can always do a nair instead. It's because that works out pretty well too. So we'll go up smash to up tilt to nair. Oop, I actually missed that one there. Let's try again. Yeah, same thing. Uh, it's just 7, 54. Easy 54, 0 to 54. That is scary in a character. This next combo you can also do at 0. In fact, I highly advise it because it's basically true at 0. Um, I guess you could attempt it if your opponent doesn't know what's going on at a higher percent. 
but it works best at zero. It's very simple, anybody can do it. All it is, is it's an up tilt to a side B. And if you're lucky, you will get the nine and possibly kill really early. Now, the cool thing about this is, if you don't want to do a side B because you're afraid of getting a one and you want something more consistent, you can also do two back airs instead of a side B. So here's what it looks like with the side B. Up tilt to side B. Got my apples. Let's see if I can get a nine just so I can show you. Oop, more apples. Can we get three sevens? Maybe that'd be even cooler than a nine at this point. Oh, wow! <laughs> I can't believe we actually did that, but essentially uh, you keep doing it and you can hopefully get a nine. Um, just a very, very good one. Here we go. You just saw there, it's basically a zero to death, depending on where the opponent is on the stage. And I said before, if you don't want to go for your um, your side B, if you're not looking for a judge, you can always go for two back airs as follow-ups. Let me see if I can get that to so be true. Oh, nope. I was doing it earlier. Here we go. 38%, 10, pretty nice. Um, but I'm one of those people that'll probably look for judge every time because I just enjoy doing it so much. This combo can also be done at 0%. However, it's a little bit more tricky to do. Um, if you don't want to have the initial first step, you can always just skip straight to the second one. But once you get used to doing the first step, it's a little bit easier. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go for a fair. It doesn't matter where you land it, so long as you do it facing your opponent because your opponent always goes in the direction of the bomb that you sent. So if I send the bomb to the right, the explosion will send my opponent to the right, if that makes any sense, I guess. And then um, you're gonna follow up with an up smash and two back airs. So here's what it's gonna look like. Hopefully I can do it the first try. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. 10, per, uh, 10 combo with 56 damage. I said before, if you don't want to go for a fair, maybe you're just uncomfortable doing it, maybe you're afraid your opponent's going to anti-air you or something, you can always hopefully just go for a random up smash. That'll work too. I like to have my opponent behind me when I do it because it makes the backers a little easier, but you can do whatever you want if it makes you feel comfortable. Okay, our fourth combo is actually going to use our throw. Our down throw, which I said before, is a pretty good combo starter, combo tool basically. So it's going to be down throw to fair to up air. And that's, that's the whole combo. However, if you think you can extend it, you can always attempt to go for an up B afterwards. It's a little bit harder depending on how your opponent DIs and you really have to read how they're DIing to really get this combo off. But when you do, it still is pretty good to actually hit it. So hopefully we can do it. I'm not very good at hitting the final step with the B up, so I usually stop it after the up air. But you could always follow up with the second up air if you really wanted to. So here's what it'll look like. Oh, not good to miss it on the first try. And pop up into him. I actually got the up B. That's what you just saw. Um, I don't know. Something about ending it on the up B. It doesn't really do too much damage, but it's a nice little like, yeah, I got that on you too. So it's kind of just a cool combo to hit, and it is a 40% combo. Or 44%, my bad. Alright, our fifth combo actually works from anywhere from 0 to 50%. It may go a little bit above 50%, but I find 50% is like the safe cap off. So anywhere from 0 to 50 this will work. This is just to kind of extend damage if you're having a hard time comboing. Also, when your opponents get to around the 65% mark, they usually are killable by, up, or, uh, by down smash to forward smash. So don't really worry too much about killing. You won't really have a problem with it with Game & Watch, but essentially all it is is just a very simple up throw to up air. Easy 27. I think it can do a little more, maybe around 30, depending on how high you jump or how quick it is. Yeah, there you go. So 30%, really easy. If it works around 50, when, when it does work around 50, you probably aren't gonna get the 30, or yeah, 30% 30 damage. It's more likely gonna be around 20 to 25 because the you basically have more knockback on the up throw, and uh, it's a little bit harder to hit, hit all the uh, parts of up air. So let's see what we can actually do if it's at 50. Still though, very, very useful. Uh, we didn't even hit it there. There we go. Yeah, just 23 there, but that's still not bad because it basically puts our opponent in a kill position. See, very simple. These last two combos, you may have already seen me do within the video. But um, the first one we're going to talk about is another zero to certain percent kind of combo. This actually works anywhere from zero to 80, so it's usually really reliable. And it's something you'll probably find yourself doing quite often because it makes use of your get out of jail free card, which is your B up or your up B. Essentially, all it is is you're going, if you feel or pressured and you're shielding, you basically up B into an up air 
Or if you feel more comfortable doing a neutral air, you can do that too, but it's not as safe as doing an up air. The up air is just a little more difficult to get, but once you practice it a few times, it's much easier. So let's do it real quick if I can show you guys. We're gonna do our up B to up air. Simple as that. Put our opponent way ahead of us, or way above us really. We are on the ground safe where we can now juggle if we need to. On top of that, it was 18 easy damage. And of course, you can always go for your up B to neutral air. Only problem with that is sometimes your opponent or your opponent falls out of it and you don't want that because then they can then punish you in the air. And you've already used your up B, so it makes it a little more difficult for you. And finally, our last combo of the video. It is a situational combo, but I think it's really cool when you can hit it. So first, it's gonna require us to have our bucket filled up entirely. Let me see if I can put him, there you go. All right, we got our filled bucket. And here's what you can do. Um, for me personally, I'm comfortable doing down throw to jump and then you down B. So it's basically a down throw to bucket. You need to jump though, just keep that in mind. Or if you'd rather do up tilt to down B with the bucket full, that works too. But for me, I'm just more comfortable doing it with my down throw. So here's what it looks like. Easy 60, two hits, incredibly fast. Um, if you do it on the ledge, it's probably gonna kill. It's 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 just something else, basically. I'm gonna try to get, uh, let's see if I can reset this. I'm gonna try to show you what it looks like with up tilt. I'm just not that good when it comes to doing the up tilt one, though, for some reason. Let me see, where is it at, there we go. All right, so keep in mind, when you do up tilt, the direction you're facing is the direction your opponent will not be, because you're going to get your initial first hit, the second hit, and the second hit will put your opponent behind you. So you're basically going to need to <laughs> up tilt, do a quick turn around, and then be down. And that's a little difficult, but not too hard. So here we go. Wow, that really was a zero to death. 73 damage. I think that's a good way to end the video. Thanks again for Geekman Stan for suggesting this video. I really do appreciate it. Um, it was one I wanted to make originally, I just hadn't really gotten around to it. If you comment in the section below, if you watch this video, I'll be sure to pin it or highlight it just so others can tell you thank you if they also learned from this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe for more.